Travelers, what was your biggest cultural shock? Story one, I was born in America, lived here all my years. When I was in my teens, my father and I went to Iran, specifically Kermansha, Hamadan, Shiraz, Efahan, Tehran, and Tabriz. We took several trips out there. Apologies if I mispronounced any of those. I know the question is, what was my biggest cultural shock? But the shock when I first arrived in Tehran was, well, the lack of shock. There were pizza places that looked like Pizza Huts, McDonald's that's not actually a McDonald's, burger places on every block, Coke and Coke ripoffs in every store. It was very Americanized. My father speaks a few languages, one of which is Farsi, but many of the signs were written in Farsi and English, like road signs, etc. Even numbers used Arabic numerals in addition to Farsi numerals. The pizza was weird, though. There were no large pies, just small pan ones like the ones out of Pizza Hut, and they were filled with meat and every veggie you can imagine. Also, people there ate pizza by dipping it in ketchup. Ketchup. Like, it does not already have tomato sauce. Come on, Iran. Anyway, another thing was that no one was mean to me. Hell, when I went to Persepolis, a ground of chador covered teenage girls said in English, Hello, American. Handsome, handsome. The taxi drivers were super polite. One even offered us a reduced fare when traffic held us up. Also, the people were conservatively dressed in clothing, as I'm sure you all know, but the women in Tehran at least knew how to show off. Morality laws demanded that a woman wear a head cover and clothing to cover her entire body, but they never said anything about how tight it should be. <laughs> All the younger women wore their headscarves back, a little to show off their highlights, at least a bit. They wore skinny jeans and tight shirts and sometimes a good amount of flashy jewelry. Now, there was one part that I did not like. A few miles out of Kamansha, my father took me to a small village near the Iraqi border where they made beautiful pottery and carpets. The village was very poor compared to the rest of the modernized cities. It was the kind of village that you would see in a Fox News or CNN broadcast. Sand huts with shanty wooden doors with little indoor plumbing. I felt bad for these people, but even being all the way out here, they were still so good to us. There was a small restaurant where all the workers would come and pay a bit of money to eat this lamb soup slash stew called abgusht. I've had it before in the States, but oh my god, was this something else. It was served with fresh bread just baked in the stone ovens. I felt humbled and amazed at the same time. In my trips to Iran, I got to see how nice people could be. I was invited to eat in people's homes, even though I didn't even know them. People wished me good days and showed me hospitality that I've never seen. I also saw the lesser face of class inequality between the modernized city and rural villages. I love it there, and wish to return sometime in the future after I finish my studies. Now, let me be clear, I'm not posting this to stir political crap. This is my personal history. I'm well aware of the corruption that plagues the Iranian government, but its people, I want you to understand, don't want to have this picture imposed on them. They want to be viewed as good people, not the violent, freedom-hating thugs you see on TV. Hate the government all you want, but don't hate the people just trying to live their lives just like you and me. What an awesome message there at the end that I think we could all stand to remember. Sometimes the governments from other countries might be seen as our enemies, but the people of those countries are just people like us. Story 2 1. I went to Burkina Faso for a day while I was studying in Ghana. I am a Mexican, but I studied in the U.S. Ghana was interesting. Everyone assumed I was a Chinese investor because I had straight black hair and wasn't white. <laughs> but Burkina Faso was probably the poorest place I've ever been. Intermittent power, people just laying in the street, everything looked broken and unwashed. It made the colonias in Mexico City look like the magnificent mile in Chicago. 2. I did my undergrad at a big southern state school. It was weird being somewhere that people would just drop casual racism, like, I would never date a girl who had dated a black guy, or where my friends of color would get assaulted by wasted racists if they were out alone at night. A friend of mine, a divinity student who looked like Shaq, got beat up so badly he had to be hospitalized. He was just walking around campus between the library and our dorm floor. It was a weekday. That blew my mind. 3. I went to an Ivy for graduate school. The rich are just like you and I. They just have more money. It was strange to hear people casually drop references to yachting or to have my classmates invite me to out to skip classes for a week to go to Bali. I grew up squeezing eight people in a five-person car for day-long trips to vacation in Texas. 
Hanging out with friends who never had to worry about money was strange. Story 3. Japanese Discipline I was visiting the Hakone Outdoor Museum, a huge sculpture garden. At the end of the tour is an onsen foot bath where visitors can dip their feet in the nice hot water. Tourists of every stripe gather around the foot bath, and the attendant instructed us on the rules. The rules were to be followed to the letter. Remove shoes, remove socks, place socks inside shoes, place shoes in a designated area behind you in a basket provided. Pants cuffs are to be rolled up in this fashion. Roll back hem to the outside, then fold each additional roll in approximately one inch folds. Continue folding up trouser cuffs until the roll extends past your calf muscle. Last fold should be a tight fold to keep your trouser cuff up. Place feet in an onsen foot bath and enjoy. When finished with enjoyment, take shoes and socks from the basket and retire to the bench to let feet dry. When feet are dry, unroll trouser cuffs and reinstall socks and shoes. You may now leave. This attendant went up and down the line repeating the instructions, correcting people whose cuff rolling was suboptimal. He wasn't mean about it, he was just exacting. The Japanese guests complied with bows and hi. The foreigners bumbled along, trying their best and getting a bit irritated. It was a hoot. I've always wanted to visit Japan, but never had the pleasure. I I've had friends who have vacationed there, and this really does seem to line up with what they've told me. Pretty interesting. Story 4. When I was in high school, I went on a student exchange to Japan. It's not exactly uncommon for exchanges between Japan and Australia. The emperor even went on a student exchange to Australia when he was a young man. It's also not uncommon for tourism between our two countries, as flights are cheap and we are basically in the same time zone. What I didn't understand at the time was that Australian tourists tend to stick to the urban areas and rural state schools in Japan never have exchanges. Twelve teenaged Australians rock up in this pig farming village striding across the hobby farm rice paddies. It was like being a member of the Beatles. We met the mayor, were in the local news, ended up on some game show where we had to sound out Japanese words, not one of those violent ones. We had people stopping their cars in the middle of the road to take photos with us. To me, seeing a Japanese person isn't news. My Japanese teacher was from Japan. It's not the same for a rural Japanese teenager. Story 5. Probably the urban-rural divide in Mexico, particularly the southern states. One thing that sticks out is more than expected poverty of the rural areas and the sometimes seen methods of seeking to make a buck in somewhat aggressive manners. Like the dude standing with a shovel in the middle of the road who apparently spent all day filling a single hole in the road with dirt from the side of the road and wanting a donation. I'm also reminded of a few times when driving and suddenly a rope with flags hanging off it sprang from the road forcing the vehicle to stop. Up jumps a bunch of children attempting to sell tortillas or some other food item. The fact that you're driving and then suddenly the road is obstructed is rather alarming, especially given at the time there had been news reports of people being suddenly stopped and robbed on the road. Story 6. USA to South Korea for school. Eating lunch in the cafeteria for the first time on my second day, trying to eat ramen with chopsticks and realizing too late that I should have spent more time working with chopsticks before coming to a country with very few forks. Thankfully, another girl nearby took pity on me and taught me through miming how to make it work. U.S. to Korea, this time to teach English. You don't quite realize the tiger mom stereotype is real until you're surrounded by a pack of moms at a kindergarten parent-teacher conference demanding to know why their five-year-old likes gym better than learning English. See, I would have had a hand up in that first part. My family was host to a foreign exchange student from Indonesia, my sister from another country, and she taught us how to make Indonesian fried rice, the best fried rice, come at me, but demanded we use chopsticks to eat it. It was tough at the time, but now I'm a pro with them. Story 7. This is hard to admit, but as someone who grew up in the USA, I was taught in a thousand ways that this country sets every standard and deserves deference from every place else on Earth. It was so ingrained that I didn't even know it was an assumption until I was outside the States and it was obvious that the USA is not the center of the universe. People are doing simply fine all over the place without, you know, being us. What's more, the myth we tell ourselves is that everyone in the world would live here if they only could. No, they would not. A whole lot of people see us as a collection of fools, green heads, and bumblers who happen to have been born in a place with a lot of natural resources. Since Trump, of course, the idea that our system of government is magically self-correcting is also under serious question. 
Story 8. My first day in China was a strange one due to erratic use of car horns on the way to my bedroom from the airport. Before getting to the house, it was decided we should eat. Couldn't use chopsticks, especially when trying to eat pig brain, a huge shocker of a first meal. Finally, feeling of being able to sleep in a bed and getting rid of jet lag and first day shocks was short-lived. Dived on my bed with glee, only to find out it's common to sleep on a bed that is hard as frick. I was sure I was going home within a week, but managed three years there and loved it, apart from the first week. Thank you, China. Story 9. Went to Guatemala. Guy was telling me about how he was doing very well financially because with his $3 a day salary, he saved up and bought a bunch of baby chicks. Raised them, kept half the hens that made good eggs, and sold the rest. Used that money to buy more chicks, rinse and repeat over years. Once he had enough, he sold all the hens and bought a calf, baby cow. He raised it to adulthood and sold it, using the money to buy two more baby calves. After five to six years of doing this, right before he was going to sell the cows and use that money to buy a one-room house for his family, not one bedroom, one room, one of the cows got sick and died. It set him back years and only over something worth a few hundred dollars. He bought me pizza when he invited me over. There are definitely a lot of countries out there where a lot of the citizens have to do with so little money, it doesn't seem feasible. And from what I've seen, oftentimes those people tend to be some of the most compassionate and generous. Story 10. The level of freedom they give kids in Japan. When I went there as an exchange student at age 16, I had basically almost always had an adult with me when outside of the house, or at the very least, they always knew where I was. Suddenly, I'm in Sanamiya, a massive shopping hub in Kobe, and my host brother just tells me to do whatever I want while he's at German lessons for a couple hours. It took me an hour before I left the train station because he had to fight the instinct to wait and be told where I could go. It was so liberating, just going wherever I wanted, shopping and buying what I wanted, and my only limit was my walking distance and my available time. It was my first real experience of freedom, and honestly, back in America, I still don't feel that way, even while driving. Now I just feel shackled to a car rather than my home. Story 11. Went to Rome. Was honestly taken back by the amount of trash just on the floor and sidewalk. Even the Vatican was just littered with wrappers, plastic bottles, plastic stuck into any crevice on the walls. As an American that never litters, I just couldn't understand seeing people just drop trash on the sidewalk. Also, not that cultural, but the amount of Africans outside the Colosseum that aggressively approach you and put bracelets on you expecting you to pay. I've seen the same people do it in France, but I saw the French police monitoring them and occasionally breaking them up. In Italy, there was no attempt to divert them away from tourists. Story 12. I grew up almost entirely east of the Mississippi, and in Europe for a few years, Dad's job had us moving a lot. Recently, I finally got to go on a trip and see the western half of the U.S., and it was just different. States like Idaho, Utah, and some parts of South Dakota honestly felt more foreign to me than France, Germany, and even Italy did. Still had an amazing time, and highly recommend it to anyone who has a month to spare. No disrespect to anyone from those states, but at least as someone from Minnesota, Idaho is my sworn enemy. I've only been to Idaho... No, wait. No, I'm thinking of Iowa. <laughs> Do I dislike Idaho? I don't think I think of Idaho. Eh, keep doing what you're doing then. But Iowa, I've got my eyes on you. Story 13. The sheer awesomeness of Japanese convenience store. My local 7-Eleven has sticky floors and doubtful-looking packaged sandwiches. The 7-Elevens in Japan are clean, well-lit, have a great selection of lunch-slash-dinner prepackaged meals, and not only do they have a cold drink section... They have a special heated unit for hot drinks. When I saw all the technological innovations in Japan, I felt like I came from a third world country. Story 14. Watching a child crap on a sidewalk in the forbidden city in Beijing and nobody batted an eye. Chinese culture in general is very different. No personal space and men seem to be blatantly piggish, pulling up their shirt to air out a drink belly, constantly hawking loogies and blowing smoke in people's faces. Story 15. I would not really say this was culture shock, but it really stood out to me even at 11 years old. My family and I went to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We just moved to southern Missouri, a very white place, a year before that from southern Minnesota. Anyways, we stopped at a Wendy's in Milwaukee to grab some lunch. I looked around and noticed we were the only white people, including employees, in the entire restaurant. 
I've, uh, I've been to Milwaukee, and I mean, it's a big city. Well, big for those Scannies. So I'm guessing you were just seeing a more culturally diverse population. Probably some good culture shock to be exposed to. Story 16. Went to Armenia. I'm Armenian, so I went with our church. I've heard that Armenia is a Christian country, but I didn't know every single person was Christian. There are churches virtually everywhere, and I'm not joking that everyone in that country is Christian. Story 17. Got off the plane in Thailand. As we were walking through customs, there was a line on the ground. The line above it said, if you cross this line and are carrying drugs, the sentence is death. I was never so nervous in my life. I was thinking, what if they find something in my case? They didn't, of course, because I don't use drugs. Story 18. A few buddies and I went on a trip overseas. We were a close bunch and knew we would get a little noticed as we decided to old dress in the same outfits. Well, after multiple connecting flights, a small layover in Germany, and rough landing, we finally made it to our destination, only to have some rude guy down the street shoot some mortars and rockets at us within a couple hours of landing. I do not recommend Afghanistan in the summer. Story 19. Went on a South African safari when I was 12. We stayed in some of the most elaborate mansions I've ever seen and would drive past houses made of mud. The inequality of wealth there is something I've never experienced before. Also, before I'm brigaded for hunting, I was 12. I didn't really comprehend what I was doing. Furthermore, all the meat went directly towards the impoverished, starving locals. Yeah, you can't blame a 12-year-old for getting brought along on a trip like that. And wealth inequality is really hard to see when it's that apparent. Hopefully things in the world will march towards improvement and better lives for all. Story 20. Splitting a bill really isn't a thing in Great Britain. All meals go on one bill. Update. Thanks for the feedback. General consensus seems to be it isn't a thing, unless it is. Story 21. Went to Spain. Super friendly and accepting of all cultures. Had menus printed in every language available. People spoke several languages ranging from English to Russian. Loved it. Drove up to France, where they only speak French. I fortunately speak enough French to get by, but it was really intimidating. Story 22. So I went to Vietnam a couple years back with my friend Marcus. Marcus is black. I am not. We're eating at this small place tucked deep in the mountains where our server comes up to us, his friend in tow. The server, without saying a word, saddles next to Marcus, strikes a buddy Jesus pose, and walks off to get our food. I looked at Marcus and said, You're on some dude's Twitter right now with the caption, Not Obama, but met my first black guy, or something similar. Please like and subscribe if you've made it this far. I hope you'll enjoy the rest of the video and have a wonderful day. Story 23 was in mainland China for a while. Guangzhou. I absolutely loved all of it, but firstly, as a woman, I was amazed to feel very safe walking around alone at night. I took motor taxis in the dead of night in remote areas and felt very safe with all the male drivers. I never felt threatened or afraid of anyone. Everyone was nice and wanted to help the white foreigner. Also, the anarchic traffic system that nobody seems to have accidents in despite all the chaos as well as it being a general rule that others will cut you in lines and think nothing of it. I have a hard enough time with traffic systems that are full of rules and signs and all that. I cannot imagine ever getting used to the traffic I've seen in countries like China and Vietnam. Just watching videos makes me anxious. Story 24. The feeling of being so small and alone on a remote island looking up to the starry sky of the Indian Ocean. I'm used to being in the thick of things. Walk for half an hour through the woods and you'll eventually pop out alongside a road. Was not prepared for the vastness of everything. Also, the U.S. It was a strange experience. A lot like home, but not quite. Like an alternate version of home where everything is a lot bigger and people are more talkative. The food and drinks taste different too, although we have our own versions of them back home. Sodas were a lot sweeter than I was used to. Story 25. When I went to Vietnam 10 years ago, I thought there must have been a traffic jam on the way out of the airport. Motorbike and car horns kept beeping. Then I realized it was normal everywhere in Vietnam. I was there for work, and we had a driver who had worn a spot in his steering wheel from beeping the horn so much. Story 26. Smarties are chocolate. I'm from the U.S., and the first time I was in the U.K., on the very first day, I bought a pack of Smarties thinking it was pure sugar to perk me up from the jet lag. I drank the box to get a quick mouthful and was suddenly hit by the taste of chocolate and was shocked. 
Also, a couple minutes later, I found out that I was allergic to the dye they used in the coating, which I would have known if I'd bothered to read the box. Anyway, Smarties are chocolate. Beware. I'm more concerned that you thought they were going to be like American Smarties and decided to just dump a bunch into your mouth. I might get flack for this, but American Smarties are gross and barely a step above the chalk pieces that are candy hearts. Story 27, the fascination with Westerners in rural China and India. Within an hour of landing in a second tier in a Chinese city, I was invited to a random couple's wedding who were honored to have us show up. They even shuffled family members around in order to place my friend and I at a front and center dinner table and a shout out from the DJ. In China and India, many people treat Westerners like celebrity and want to take photos with you. Story 28. Indonesia. People just sit next to you on the train slash bus, ask personal questions immediately, want to know why you do not have kids or a husband, and why you are fat or that you should get a haircut because your hair is ugly. It felt like Christmas at home, but then for months from multiple people instead of my mum. Story 29. While sitting on a bench in front of the gate in India and in Mumbai, we agreed to take a photo with a few Indian guys, and when other Indian passerbys saw this, they would hurriedly change places with them and we would take another. This went on and amused us for close to 10 minutes with no end in sight before we had to walk away. Gives you a bit of an ego at first, but got really annoying for my blonde friend and most backpacker females we met. Story 30. My cousin and I went to Denmark a few years back. Everyone there was good looking. They all had good fashion and sense of style. It was ridiculous. It got to a point where we played a game to find an ugly slash dressed down person. Couldn't find anyone for a solid two hours and we were in the heart of downtown Copenhagen. It made me want to live there because everyone is beautiful, but also not want to live there because I'd feel pressured to appear my best 24-7. Sometimes I like wearing comfortable, non-fashionable clothes when I run errands. Yeah, while I do love sporting my stylish looks and whatnot, I will say even I get lazy and go to the hardware store in some old jeans and a t-shirt plenty of days. Thankfully, I'm so stunning that even then I'm still a solid 8 out of 10. Story 31. The air pollution in major Chinese cities is so bad that your eyes water the second you step out of the airport. You also undergo a sort of acclimation sickness within the first couple weeks. The other thing about China is that it's such an old country that you have ancient temples and monuments, some thousands of years old, right next to hypermodern eight-story shopping centers. Story 32. Malaysia as a woman from the U.S. I got for wearing shorts. I got rocks thrown at me. A pulled. Men would not address me. The hotel we were at assumed I was a second wife to my married couple friends. In fact, I always had to convince them that I wanted my own room. I was never Miss Mongoose of Love. I was always Mrs. Any Male Friend I Was With. Story 33. Examples of culture shock in reverse. I'm an American who has spent the past two years living in China. After my first trip back to the U.S. after a full year abroad, I was just really shocked by how much grass there was everywhere. Space is such a luxury in Beijing that it was startling to see how much is devoted to your average front-slash-backyard. I was also shocked by how enormously wide the roads in my suburban section of the city felt. Story 34. Not from my travels, but I had a client that went to Bataan. Real conservative lady. I ask how it went. She goes, it was great. They really like male genitals over there. I asked her to elaborate. She said there were peens everywhere. Physical representations of peens on hats on the sidewalk everywhere. There was a parade where some important guy had a peen staff and knighted dignitaries with it. That made me happy. I'm all for being a little less prudish and celebrating our bodies, but I have to say, a world full of peens might just be a little much for even me. Let's at least equal things out and get some V's out there as well, folks. Balance is key. Story 35. I'm from one of the most unequal countries in the world, but going to India still blew my mind. Delhi is a heaving, throbbing city, people sleeping in literal dirt next to mansions. Perhaps the pilgrimage to the Taj Mahal was the most eye-opening. By far the most beautiful, perhaps most opulent man-made structure I've seen on Earth, but it's mired in the most saddening poverty imaginable. Story 36. When my wife and I went to France, it was really strange to me to find out that I was considered a lunatic for making eye contact and smiling slash nodding at strangers as we passed them on the streets. I got the dirtiest looks from people for a few hours before my friend, who was living there at the time, 
told me that that was a no-no in their culture. Story 37. As an American, I had my eyes opened up to what poor really meant. That sounds weird, I know, but when you say you are poor here, it's not even close to what the rest of the world means. I don't mean to insult, demean, or downplay anyone's struggles, but there are people who would effing fight you to be poor in America. Story 38. Content warning. Child abuse. Click ahead 14 seconds to skip this story. Not me, but my dad went to India for business and said there were children across their face begging for money. Driver told him their parents did that to them to make them look more pathetic so people would give them money. Story 39. I went to the Netherlands as an LSD, Mormon missionary. The first person I tried to talk to stopped me and said, uh, I don't speak Dutch and I'm gay so Jesus won't work for me. And he walked away. My companion just laughed and said, welcome to the Netherlands. I think I'm going to keep that one in my back pocket for the next time I have some Mormons come knocking on my front door. Also hope it works with the JWs in the neighborhood as well. They're pleasant enough, but I've had my fill of evangelizing in my life. Story 40. I visited the U.S. when I was about 10 years old and my brother was 5. It was required by law that children under 7, I don't remember the exact age, feel free to correct me, needed to sit in a child car seat. That wasn't a thing back home in Pakistan. Story 41. I traveled outside of the U.S. in my 20s, and my biggest cultural shock were how prude we as Americans are and how far we have our heads up our own butts. Story 42. Being in Ethiopia and hearing about a shooting perpetrated by Ethiopian military troops attacking at a mosque in Addis, and then hearing that no one outside of Ethiopia would ever know of it because when the government controls the telecommunications, they can turn the internet off for a few days and there is no way to get news out. Story 43. I landed in Juba, South Sudan. There were anti-aircraft guns on the roof of the airport, child soldiers in the tiny arrivals hall. The airport gift shop was selling loose raw eggs and salt. There were no roads, no electricity, no bank system, no running water, and no garbage collection. So the entire city smelled of burning garbage. Story 44. Probably getting off the plane in Rangoon, where it was 110 degrees, and there was like a swarm of fly-bitten kids missing limbs and crap begging. The stories of kids and people in poverty in these other countries like this just breaks my heart. You give to charities and support organizations that you hope help, but you have to wonder if it is even making a dent in all this. Story 45. Lived in the UK for most of my life and then moved to Connecticut. The first time I walked my dog in my new neighborhood, someone engaged me in a full-on conversation. Scary. Story 46. White American visiting India. The number of people who came up to me and said, Picture? Picture. And at first I figured they wanted me to take their picture. No, they wanted a picture of slash with me. Happened at least five times. Story 47. Went to Germany for six months and didn't have any culture shock. Came home and went to a county fair in the very small rural part of the U.S. with my family. The number of fat, old, shirtless guys, people without teeth, and Confederate flags shocked me to my core. Story 48. When I was in Budapest, I visited a couple public baths. My boyfriend noticed a lot of people staring at me. After a while, I realized I was the only one with tattoos. Story 49. Old people in China are really rude and cut in line and the idea of a line is not a thing to them. Story 50. I went to France and Belgium from the U.S. and was shocked at the lack of highway advertising. No billboards or anything. Holy cow, and just like that I have a newfound interest in going to Japan or Belgium. As someone who gets way too easily distracted, getting rid of highway advertising would mean a lot fewer missed exits or even just lost trains of thought. Story 51. Having to pay to use a public toilet in many parts of Europe. I'm from Australia where there are free public toilets everywhere, and before anyone asks, yes, they generally are pretty clean. Story 52. It was very eye-opening, especially after moving to southern Missouri. Story 53. Went to San Francisco. Was shocked to see the amount of homeless people there. Not to mention the amount of human crap on the ground. It's literally disgusting, like third world disgusting. You Americans need to fix that crap. Story 54. Mine was coming back home to Canada after living in Seoul for a year. Being back at my mom's house in the suburbs was so flat. I felt so out of place. Took about two months to get used to it again. 
Story 55. Went to New York City in the summer. The whole place smelt like hot garbage. Probably because of the sun beating down on all the garbage laying in the streets all day. Story 56. Went to Japan. First night at 1 a.m. in the metro, and it was loaded with people in suits and other formal clothing looking completely exhausted, almost falling asleep on each other's laps. Just an ordinary day for Tokyo people. I've heard stories about the grueling work ethic for a lot of folks in Japan, and you wonder just how true it is. If this story is to be believed, it sounds to be very true. Oofta. Story 57. The Mistreatment of Dogs in Central America. It's heartbreaking to see these emaciated dogs wandering the streets and wondering if they're going to get blasted by some crappy driver. Story 58. I had an Uber driver message me saying he was canceling because he saw local drivers who have and will damage his car if he enters their area. Instead of like $3 with Uber, I paid a local driver $10. Story 59. Kettles are a rarity in America. Like, how the frick do you make pot noodles over there? Yes, how on earth could we solve the mystery of heating up a small amount of water? If only there was some other kind of pot that we could put water in and then place on a heated surface until it boiled. Sadly, we all just eat the noodles dry. Story 60. I went to the Philippines. On the trip from the airport, a group of homeless children took control of a bridge and demanded payment for people crossing it. People actually paid, too. Story 61. In Taiwan, there was a guy who ate a Big Mac using chopsticks. Story 62. In Samoa, dudes share toilet cubicles to take a leak. How do you tell a huge Samoan bloke you don't want to cross streams? Story 63. In Thailand, a little kid had never seen a white person as pale as I was, and he put his little hand on my knee to see if it was real. Culture shock for both of us, I guess. Story 64. I went to Paris and not one person was rude to me for not knowing French. Very disappointing. Story 65. Everything is way too big in the U.S. and way too small in Europe. Story 66. In the U.S., I've seen people who ate pizza dipped in ranch. Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.